back thickness, also known as the density of the back, is one of the hardest parts of your physique to develop. The thickness of the back, referring to the traps, rhomboids, middle back, and lumbar, are some of the strongest muscles of the upper body and also part of the entire posterior chain. This gives these muscles the ability to handle some very heavy loading. And as a result, this requires the need for relatively heavy weights and more taxing movements in your training. To target the thickness of the upper back, horizontal pulling is the most important exercise pattern to develop back density. That's any movement you perform where you pull the arms in a horizontal plane towards the body. That means rows and lots of them. In this video, we're gonna go over my three most important rows in back training to specifically improve the thickness of the back rather than the width. The first is the bread and butter barbell row. There's no better exercise to target the upper back thickness than the barbell row, but there's many variations that you can use depending on your focus and specific needs. They all have their own pros and cons, some much better than others. For me, I'm personally using two variations in my training currently, the 90 degree barbell row, which was traditionally how guys like Arnold and other old school bodybuilders performed the row. The second movement is the dead stop row, which today is more commonly referred to as the pen lay row. Starting with a 90 degree row, which was a staple old school bodybuilding movement that many took even a step further by performing it off of a block for an even greater range of motion. Contrary to the Yates row, that's more upright to hit the lats, when positioning yourself around 90 degrees, you shift the emphasis in two areas. Because you're much more bent over, the range of motion is greater and you're pulling the bar in a more horizontal motion to the middle of the back. And the middle of the back is forced to work harder and less emphasis is placed on the lats. And secondly, because you're locked into this 90 degree position, the lower back must support the load, especially at the bottom of the movement. This places a ton of emphasis on the lumbar and really forces it to become stronger to support heavier loads. Both of these changes to the movement does require you to use much lighter weights than you would on something like a Yates row. For example, I'll generally perform the Yates row with around 315 pounds for the same number of reps I can get with only 185 pounds performing the lift this way. But the technique being so different makes it a completely different exercise targeting different muscles. To follow that movement up and to train the upper back harder without the limit of the lower back and really fatigue the rhomboids and the middle back, the next movement we perform is the strict dead stop row. The setup here should be almost identical to the barbell row, except you're lowering the weight to the floor and resetting each individual rep. Because the lower back doesn't have to bear the weight on the bottom, it allows you to subject the upper back to heavier weights, taking out the weak link in the movement. But we never wanna neglect the lower back wall together. For that reason, both these movements specifically complement each other, and they should be used together to get the most out of your back thickness training. The final row variation I perform here is the old school T-bar row. This is another movement that was generally performed with a huge range of motion, and even with plenty of hip hinging, which I've covered many times before. However, again, if we're specifically targeting the thickness of the back, few tweaks to this movement should be made to target your specific goals. First, keeping the body as close to a 90 degree angle as possible is key. On T-bar rows, this can be a difficult task because the bar will naturally pull you forward at the bottom of the movement and closer at the top. To work around this, adding a landmine attachment and extending the bar allows you to step in front of the weights and lock yourself in the position throughout the entire movement. If you watch the clips, you can see I stay fully locked in at the top and the bottom while still rowing the weight through a full range of motion. That's something that's almost impossible on a traditional T-bar row setup, which is why you see so many people standing almost completely upright and performing almost zero range of motion on the lift. These three movements can be extremely demanding on the thickness of your back and the posterior chain. And if done correctly, you will be fairly fatigued after performing all three back to back. And this is generally why I recommend back thickness training to be limited to just once per week and then following up your second or even third back workouts with more exercises that focus on the width of your back. If you're looking to add mass and thickness to the upper back, these three exercises should become staples in your training. And if you're looking for a program that incorporates back thickness, width, and general mass to the entire body, I recommend you check out my old school mass gain ebook, membership program, or custom online coaching program. For more info, visit all the links below. And if you wanna see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.